What's going on, Giants fans? This is Breaking Tackles, the New York Giants podcast, hosted by me, Antonio Reyes. What's going on? Hope everybody's good, man. This is the new style that we will be doing the podcast. We will be doing a video podcast. Why? Because it would be that much easier for me to break down film when I'm watching the coaches tape and delivering to you guys. You guys can also see what I'm doing instead of just having Twitter clips, um, which I will still do that, uh, but I'll have it in the actual podcast, not just separate Twitter clips. Um, and what I could just do is actually I could just cut little pieces from the podcast and put it on Twitter, but that's neither here or there. But I do want you guys to enjoy this podcast. Uh, it's going to be another a, a good enough period before we see another one because I do want to wait till we get to training camp and have training camp games. Uh, so be patient with me. We will be having episodes uh, more frequently as the season gets going. But for now, enjoy my breakdown of the offseason. Like, subscribe, and uh, have a great one, guys. The New York Giants have accomplished one thing for sure this offseason, and it's creating depth in this team this is probably the deepest team that i've seen on the giants <clears throat> maybe in about 10 years to be honest the giants ha now can afford even though nobody wants injuries the giants can afford position injuries at the positions of outside linebacker which they couldn't do it last year and we saw how much it hurt them they could afford positions they could afford injuries at tight end they could afford injuries at wide receiver they have depth in these positions, and obviously they can afford injuries in the defensive back because they have the depth for these positions. Yes, nobody wants to see uh, any any starters get hurt, but it happens. It's just the name of football. This is the game of football, so we will see injuries as they happen. But let's break down on how the Giants roster is probably the deepest and what type of schemes and what do we expect this year on uh, on this team of the Giants. All right, let's talk about the New York Giants defense. In my opinion, the New York Giants defense, it's going to be better than last year's defense. And last year's defense was pretty good. It was actually the heart and soul of this team. But let's talk about some acquisitions that are going to make this defense better. First and foremost, let's start with Reggie Ragland. He is going to be the inside linebacker along with Blake Martinez when it comes to maybe run down situations. So maybe first and second down, he will be in on the field. These two guys are extremely good at racking up tackles and stopping the run. Reggie Ragland's ang uh, angles towards runs, it's impressive. If you check his tape, you will notice that this guy is really good. Put Blake Martinez in there, who we know is an awesome tackler, very good run supporter. It's going to be a really interesting defense from that aspect in terms of the run. On the defensive line, we have Tomlinson, who is no longer with us. Danny Shelton is going to replace him. Honestly, this is where I feel like we don't have too strong of a foundation, but it's fine because Dexter Lawrence, in my opinion, this is where he needs to step up another level. He is entering now another season. He is a former first-round draft pick, so he needs to step up and deliver on that first-round label. It's put up or shut up for a lot of players, and I think this is going to be number number one player on the list. They need to put up and show us that he is a number one draft pick. What do we want to see from Dexter Lawrence? I just want to see, again, the consistent on run defense. He was on the field on run, decent, on run defenses. He wasn't too much on the field when it came to passing and, and, and uh, rushing the passer. So we need to see that from him. We need to see him to be a three down linemen uh, this upcoming season. In terms of Leonard Williams, we know what we get Leonard Williams for. He is a high pressure guy. Will we get the sacks that we got last year? I don't know. I honestly don't care either. I just want Leonard Williams to get his QB hits, to keep getting his pressure. It needs to have two men on him at all times. If not, then the defense is in trouble. So they have to put two defenders on him. 
All right, guys, another guy that I'm excited for is free agent Afadi Odenabo. And he is a pass rush specialist. Not only that, he was one of the highest guys to be blocked by two offensive linemen or two blockers in the NFL season last year. Now imagine that we have Leonard Williams who requires two men on him at all times to block him. One-on-one -on -one battles he's gonna crush. Now we have a Fadi on third down who's gonna come in who's also gonna require you to have the three block, three, uh, two blockers on him. That's gonna leave room for Dexter Lawrence and that's also gonna leave room for the others outside linebackers. This is where the New York Giants honestly can get real creative because they're gonna have all these exotic looks. The New York Giants can honestly go and put up crazy type of defenses. They could have a 2-5-4 personnel. They could have uh, they could have crazy things where they could have one down lineman, six linebackers, and then they or five linebackers and four and you know and, and five DBs. It's just real crazy how they could have their own version of NASCAR where they could have uh, Carter on the field. Uh, Ojolari on the field, which is their rookie, where we'll get back, we'll get to him. And we have Odenabo. Obviously, we're going to have Leonard Williams on the field. It's going to be very interesting, the creativity that's going to be coming up with this defense. But this defense, I'm really excited for. This should be uh, taking another step up, especially with this next guy that we're going to be mentioning. The big question with the New York Giants is going to be a Dory Jackson, who is the big acquisition in the offseason. It's a lot of risk. They give him a lot of money for a guy who's only played 14 games in the last two years. Uh, but Adoree Jackson just has to go ahead and show up and step up, stay healthy on the field. The New York Giants desperately need help on the pass coverage side of the defense. The New York Giants gave up almost 4,000 yards last year. And the question that I had with them, it wasn't necessarily the another corner. It was more of the inside linebackers. We we needed to have a coverage linebacker. We did not get at this offseason. It's going to be really tough to see how the Giants are going to address the middle of the field. Again, I understand how the Giants could go ahead and have three safety look. My only problem with the three safety look is that when you have somebody that's, for example, on second down and they have second and 10 to go, it's not going to be that bad if they have a three safety look and they say, hey, okay, listen, let's try to run the ball. Let's try to get six yards, even five yards on second down. Three safety look, you just run it right out the safety, get five yards if possible. And if you do that, then that sets off with a really good third down. Now, if the Giants have a sack or a loss of yards on first down and then they try to bring in that three safety look that's perfect i think that works out better let's hope to see how the Giants are going to run that when it comes to dory jackson he just needs to stay on the field and if he does automatically the Giants are just going to be that much better on defense all right guys so let's talk about the rookie um the big rookie i guess on defense that was get drafted on the second round aziz ojalari i'll be honest guys when it comes to the college to the NFL transition, that is not my strong point. I really just need to see at least one year for these guys in the pro level to just see more or less where they're going to go. And, and, and it, is it something that I, I'm looking forward to? With Aziz, just looking at his tape, the dude could turn the corner on the outside linebacker position on that edge. Uh, he looks like he is really polished when it comes to the sacks. According to a lot of people, a lot of experts, he was supposed to be a first on draft pick, but the medical scared off some people. Uh, but that was an injury that happened in high school. It wasn't even a collegiate, a collegiate injury. So the Giants might be on, uh, on to something with this guy. Now the Giants have death on the outside linebacker position. They have O'Shea Zinemez, um, Hinemez, Zinemez. <laughs> they have Ojolari. They have Carter, who I would love to see just take that final step, which I believe he was going to take last year, um, but he didn't. Remember the last year we had Zimenez and then we had Carter hurt. This year, even if, God forbid, those guys get hurt, we do have more depth in the Giants, and that's the key thing. I think that the Giants is going to need that. Again, we have uh, Fadi, 
we have uh, Aziz, we have Lorenzo, and then we have Xavier, all there in case, you know, man, one man goes down, it's just depth, the depth that we needed. And that's why I feel like the Giants defense is going to be so much stronger this year because of the amount of people they added. They also added DBs in the draft. Um, again, this is going to be a very strong team. We haven't even spoken about Xavier McKinney. And Xavier, Xavier McKinney also steps up and just competes to be on the field. It's going to be great, man. Remember that we also have Logan Ryan, who was a pro bowler. And uh, this team is just stacked, man. It's a team that should take a, a big step when it comes to the defense. Believe it or not, this defense was really good last year. But I really think this defense is going to be great this upcoming season. The fan base spoke and the New York Giants listened. The New York Giants got uh, addressed their wide receiver position, which uh, they got the biggest splash out of offense or defense was Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay is just a 50-50 ball monster. Two seasons ago, Kenny Galladay caught touchdown passes from three different quarterbacks on Detroit. What I said earlier, before I even got the news of Kenny Galladay, I said, hey, listen, how is Kenny Galladay going to be a better wide receiver with Matthew Stafford, coming from Matthew Stafford, going to Daniel Jones? It doesn't matter. This guy's going to make Daniel Jones better. When Daniel Jones is winning down, Daniel Jones could just throw it up to Galladay. And most likely, that is going to be a successful play. And that's something the Giants honestly has never had. Daniel Jones has never had something like that. And this time around, we're going to see if that can improve uh, Daniel Jones' numbers. Another thing the Giants got is they got Dan John Ross. John Ross is a speed demon who never lived up to expectations. He was a first-round draft pick. Maybe the new scene is going to help him out. Darius Slayton, who was playing hurt throughout the entire year, is now going to come back healthy. This kid is really good. I'm, I'm still hoping this kid puts up even better numbers. He has all the makings to put up good numbers. Let's just go ahead and see now with a healthy season if he really is what I think he could be. In my opinion, the odd man out is going to be Sterling Shepard. And here's the reason why. We just finished getting a first-round draft pick, which is Kadarius Toney, who looks like a guy who you'd want him in the slot and you want him to create matchup nightmares. I don't know if he's as fast as Tyreek Hill, but this guy needs to be used just as Tyreek Hill. This is the guy where in every play, you have to see this guy in motion. You have to see this guy just running crossing routes all day, making it really impossible for the defense to know exactly where he is. This guy needs to be moving. This guy needs to be running reverses. This guy needs to be running sweeps, uh, screens. Uh, he just looks like a fast twitch guy, really hard to bring down. His highlight tapes are just amazing. Again, I don't think he has that top-notch speed, but I think that he could develop that top-notch speed. What are, we, oh, what are we looking forward to in the New York Giants? I honestly think that the Giants in 12 personnel or even in 21 personnel, uh, it's going to be a big problem. At the end of the day, the Giants could go into different teams, different weeks, and they could say, hey, listen, what is this team good at? Whoever they're facing, what who is what is the team good at and what is this team bad at? Let's say for example, the Giants are facing the Cowboys and they say, hey, listen, the Giants, have, the Cowboys have a great front seven. Great. The G Cowboys, the Giants could just say, hey, listen, we're going to go with 11 personnel today. We're going to have Kenny Galladay. We're going to have Slayton or Ross or Shepard. And we're going to have Tony also out there on the field. Good luck stopping all those guys. Oh, by the way, if we go 21 personnel, uh, if, we, if we go 12 personnel, we're going to have two tight ends there, and we're going to have two wide receivers. So good luck trying to stop Tony. Good luck trying to stop Galladay. Good luck trying to stop Rudolph and uh, Evan Ingram. And then we have, you have to still have to worry about Saquon Barkley, who is arguably one of the most talented running backs on the league. If Barkley can manage to play 16 ga 17 games, uh, for 16 games because it's a bye week, it's going to be a nightmare for teams. And that's one thing that we do have to worry about is that the Giants don't have that much depth on the running back position. That's fine. Uh, the running back, honestly, is the one position where, honestly speaking, if someone goes down, you, you can bring someone from the streets and get a decent type of uh, 
production from them. You don't need the home run hitter. Obviously, Saquon, we're praying that Saquon plays the entire year uh, with the New York Giants this year because we do need to see um, a first-round draft value from Saquon. If Saquon doesn't bring that first-round draft value, I'm not sure if it's worth... Uh, I think that the Giants should look into trading Saquon um, either by week eight or by the offseason. The offensive line. This is the main concern for everyone is that the offensive line... Did we do enough for the offensive line? Well, we're going to get Nate Solder back. Is Nate Solder going to start? Is he going to start over Andrew Thomas? Is Andrew Thomas and Nate Solder both going to start? Here's my opinion on this. Yes, let's say Nate Solder is good enough to start. If he is, put him at right tackle. Leave Andrew Thomas at left tackle. Why? Here's why. Andrew Thomas is slated to be here for the next 10 years. You want him to just anchor there and keep there. You don't want to be moving him around. Nate Solder, I'm not sure exactly what's his contract restructure. I'm not sure if it's still the same amount of years. But at the end of the day, he is the older guy he's eventually going to leave. We're still going to have Andrew Thomas here. You want to go ahead and you want to have Thomas on the left side and you want to have him anchored there. I understand the old traditional football says you put your best running block tackle, you put him on the right side. At the end of the day, it's 2021 football. We don't know what is what nowadays when it comes to football. So why not have the dominant side of the running position be the left side? Who cares if it's not the right side? I'd say switch it up. Have Nate Soldier play the right tackle if he does earn a starting spot. But leave Andrew Thomas, who, in my opinion, was getting better week by week, leave him on the left side. In terms of the guard, is Shane Lemieux or Will Hernandez, who they're going to compete for that for, for a guard spot. It's going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen there. Is Matt Parrott going to beat up any of the? Is going to beat out any of the tackles? There is a lot of players. We talk about Nick Gates. Is Nick Gates is going to be the center? There's just a lot of things going on with the Giants offensive line. I think they have the depth there, where in case somebody gets hurt, or they have enough depth there to kind of see who's going to be the the best one coming out of that. Uh, the Giants, the the offensive line, is going to go through. OTAs, they're going to go through spring training. They're going to have training ga uh, spring training games. And I think that by week three of week four, we should have continuity in this offensive line. And it should be a line that starts off way better than it has in the past couple of years. I am confident that we have the players in this offensive line to make it succeed. My biggest concern on the offense is not the offensive line. It is Daniel Jones. Once again, I am not the Jan Daniel, phone, uh, Daniel Jones fan that everybody wants me to be blindly believing on Jones. Jones has to once again show me that he has improved in things that he has not done very well, which is throw away the ball, dump off the ball, get rid of the ball, extend plays with his feet, not scramble. I'm not saying go and scramble. I'm saying extend plays. Uh, Daniel Jones, my biggest concern with Daniel Jones is that when he's in the pocket, he stays in the pocket in the same position. He is not trying to extend plays. Um, you can't do that in the NFL if you're trying to win. Even Tom Brady extended plays on the pocket. Another thing, too, is there was a lot of times where he got off his main read and they eventually became open. He just needs to control these little things. It's little things because Daniel Jones has the arm talent. He has the leg he has the talent to be a quarterback. It's the mental where I believe Daniel Jones needs to fix. And if he does, we will have an amazing season. Daniel Jones in 2019, I believe, had about uh, close to 30, um, if not, um, what is it, 28, 29 uh, touchdowns, total touchdowns. He had two scrambling. I think he had 26 uh, touchdowns, um, throwing passing touchdowns. So we just need him to put down, to put this season either 30 or 35 th total touchdowns and limit the turnovers, interceptions, limit fumbles. Uh, let's say, for example, total fumbles and interceptions. If you can keep it to 10, 12, that means that this guy is going to have a really good season. That means that I'm going to jump on the bandwagon with Daniel Jones. Hopefully, this is what we get. If not, if, if we're not getting this from Daniel Jones, it's easily going to be a drafting a quarterback for next upcoming season or 
maybe even trading for a quarterback in the middle of the year. Uh, and don't be surprised if that happens. Honestly, that is what I'm expecting to happen, where we're going to draft a quarterback in the middle of the year. I mean, uh, not draft the middle quarterback. Uh, we're going to we're going to uh, trade for a quarterback in the middle of the year. All right, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is the coaching staff in this team. The coaching staff has depth, which means that the Giants should come and show a lot of exotic looks on defense. We should see some type of NASCAR package, package type of bring back. Even if it's all outside linebackers, it should be brought back. I have no doubt in my mind that we will see that at one point we will have just one down lineman, which will be Leonard Williams and a whole bunch of linebackers on the field. Also, in the uh, in, on offense, we got to see Jason Garrett run more motion. He just doesn't run motion. It doesn't. He didn't do it in Dallas. He hasn't done it really here. Did he? Has he been a little bit more creative than I normally am surprised of him? Yes, I, I have to give him credit because he was a little bit more creative. Um, as the season went along last year, but it's still not enough. We need to see more creativity from Jason Garrett. Please use the motions. Look, study the Kansas City Chiefs. Look at all the motions that they're doing on their team. It definitely helps out the quarterback. It would help out Daniel Jones. And let's see how Joe Judge takes this team to another level. He is a great motivator. He is a great person that puts the team together. Um, and that's all we're going to go with today. If you guys have any any questions or anything that I left out, let me know. Um, one thing's for sure is that, you know, we're going to start getting this ball rolling on the podcast. And if that's when we'll get games going on, when we get spring training games, uh, spring training, is that baseball? Whatever, training camp, training camp games. Um, when the games go out and then we have some film to break down, we'll definitely do that. Obviously, we're excited to see not only just the starters on, on training camp, but we're, we're eager to see the backups and just to see what we have. So for Breaking Tackles, uh, this is Antonio Reyes. Guys, subscribe, like, comment, share, and I'll appreciate that. Have yourself a good one.